I've been always ambitious about my own flight controller. I already made one before but that was on basic level. So here it is. A flight controller contains some sensors, telemetry for communication and a processing unit for processing all the data. First of all, I need a microcontroller for the processing unit. I was thinking about some STM boards but my friend sent me a Raspberry Pico. For the IMU, I chose the MPU6050 and HMC but I got the QMC. Then I placed them on a damper and connected the sensors to the Pico via I2C and got the raw data. Here comes the challenge to get accurate angle fusing all the sensors. In my Node MC flight controller, I had a tough time always calibrating the sensors before his flight and they gave wrong data in flight and I was like, it doesn't happen with the commercial drones. The answer to all of this is an extended Kalman filter. So I have to dive deep into it. The basic idea of a Kalman filter is to predict the state with a sensor and correct it using another sensor with the help of statistics. In this case, it will predict the angle with a gyroscope and correct the drift using accelerometer and magnetometer. But Euler's angles are not a good way for 3D orientation representations, at least for flying vehicles which require feedback control. You will always stuck in switching at those plus minus 180, 360. So the best way is to use a quartan. It represents rotation with 4 numbers and they have quite useful properties. But they are non-linear things, so I need a non-linear version of the Kalman filter. The extended Kalman filter. I got some papers and a good resource for explaining the maths behind it. It predicts the attitude quaternion using angular velocity from the gyroscope and correct itself using Excel and Mag readings. Now the best part of it is, previously I had to get the gyro bias taking a lot of readings in the beginning and average and subtract and all, I don't need to do that here. The filter itself determines and minimizes the sensor bias. Though I need to calibrate the magnetometer for soft iron and hard iron and the accelerometer a little bit, but that's for the first time only. Then I wrote codes for all those calculations and finally the IMU turned from this to this. Now moving to the physical part of the drone, I need a very lightweight frame. These aluminum pipes are very lightweight and strong, they can be used as arms. I'm using normal BLDC motors, ESC and propolis. To mount the motor, I drilled required holes on the pipe. For holding the arms together, this flight board is a proper choice. I took two of them and secured them with screws on both sides. Now it's very strong and lightweight. Then I placed the motors one by one and realized that these joints are not strong enough. I came up with the solution, strings and glue. Now these joints are rigid. Soldering the ESCs isn't a big deal. What the flight code really does is, it reads data from the sensors and uses EK to estimate the vehicle orientation. Then takes the user input and calculates the required motor speed using a PID controller. Then the quadcopter moves as the user wants or at least tries to follow. In this part, position hold, attitude hold and other flight characteristics can be added. These motors are controlled by PWM signal since my EKF takes roughly 4.5 milliseconds, so I'm gonna use a PWM period of 5 milliseconds. Remember in the Node MC Mini drone, I had to bubble sort the PWM duty cycles and use interrupts triggering in dynamic order. The Raspberry Pico have 8 independent PWM slices controlling 2 PWM channels each. So I included their PWM library and set the clock dividers and resolution for 5 millisecond period. Now just update the duty cycle and the PWM slice will take care of the rest. To control the movement of the drone, I have to control its attitude, which will determine its horizontal acceleration resulting in desired movements. To control the attitude, I mean setting the drone's frame to a desired quaternion, PID controller is a simple still powerful option. The basic idea of the PID controller is create oscillations taking the desired attitude as mean position 
oscillation using the P controller and damp that oscillation with the D controller. This two working together the desired attitude is reached with tiny amount of oscillations. Here I want to control the drone's orientation. More precisely the angle at which the drone is tilted in each of the three axes. So the controller will be a P controller setting the motor speed proportional to the angle error and a D controller damping the angular velocity right. In a quadcopter we cannot control the angle directly with the motors. The motor supplies torque resulting in angular acceleration controlling the angular velocity then the angle. So I have to also attach a controller to the angular acceleration. Let's rearrange the whole thing. Instead of controlling the angle directly, I'll be controlling the angular velocity attaching a PID controller to it. And then I'll set the desired angular velocity proportional to the angle error with an outer P controller. A square root controller can be added replacing the outer P controller to limit the aggressive behavior when the error is very large. This controller performs well as compared to the previous controller directly set on angle. So it takes the current angle from the attitude coordinate in and get the desired angle from the user input. By the way, we don't have any user yet. Let's put a hold on that for a moment. Here I'm subtracting the angle to get the error. Guess again I'm going into the same problem those plus minus 180 360. So a better way is to use the properties of coordinate in to calculate the error angles. See, I have the current attitude coordinate in and I get a desired attitude coordinate in from the user or more specifically from the joysticks. So I have to rotate the drone from the current orientation to the desired one. Now I can get a error coordinate in that can rotate the current coordinate in to the desired coordinate in and get the angles from that error coordinate in. This way we are just into the angles between the current and the desired attitude. Now I have to tune the PID controller and it's working really stable. Communication is important for controlling the drone. Since I ever made my Android app, I'm like really involved into it. Controlling the drone with an Android app is a lot more useful than a transmitter. Like I can get real time data from the drone, what about live video from the drone and its location on the map? Yes, I'm going to use GPS and a camera on the drone. For video streaming and telemetry, Raspberry Pi Zero is a good option. The Pi will be communicating with the Pico via Evert and to the Android app via TCP socket. So the Pico will be running its flight code and the Pi will send Evert data and it will trigger an interrupt on the Pico. Reading the incoming data, it will send back some data to the Pi. I'm using very high baud rate so interrupting the main loop for a very little bit of time doesn't matter at all. After this complete cycle, the Pi will read and write data to the app via TCP. I'm using Android Studio for the app. Then design the layout and do the coding for TCP and it's done. The app sends joystick data in form of character array and does the same for receipt. Now for the live video, I attached a camera to the Pi. The Pi will be running a C++ script taking the RGB image data in form of an array and sent to the Android app via TCP socket and the app will show that inside a image view using bitmap. This cycle will repeat creating an illusion of video. It's working but there's a problem. I'm using a resolution of 640x480. Each pixel containing 24 bit, it's a lot of data. So instead of sending the raw RGB values, I used YUV for 24 format. Our eyes are good at luminance than on color. And this YUV encoding compromises the color information. Now the data is only half the size with the YUV and the image looks quite good. This new mate and GPS works quite good. The GPS sent position information in form of enemy sentences via Evert. So I hooked it up to the Evert 1 port of the Pico. 
but this time not using interrupts. I'm using DMA which will copy the data from the evot peripheral to the memory directly with our processor involvement so that the flight code runs smoothly. The GPS module is set to 10 Hz update frequency and only the record sentences in enemy. Then I added a counter which will allow a function running every 100 milliseconds and the flight code still runs at 200 Hz. Inside that function, it decodes the enemy sentences and freezes the record latitude, longitude, satellite count and fixed data. Now send the GPS data to the AWOT and then to the app. Adding a fragment to the Google Map API, the app successfully shows the drone's live location on the map. Now I have to tune the GPS hold functions for the drone to hold its latitude and longitude. Again I'll use the PID controller for this. I tried getting acceleration from the difference in latitude and longitude getting velocity and acceleration from the difference in velocity in each loop. The velocity worked fine with the filter but the acceleration was noisy. Still let's try implementing once. So a PID controller on velocity setting the desired velocity proportional to the position error. This formula is used to convert the coordinate difference in degrees to meters. This kind of works but crash due to noise in acceleration. When a PID controller is set directly on position, eliminating the acceleration, it worked like a champ. but it only holds the position. To move it with the joysticks, I used an integrator which will increase or decrease the desired latitude or longitude based on the joystick inputs. The drone currently holds its position, not the altitude, so I have to control the altitude with the throttle.
Well, I'm using Wi-Fi for communication right now. But if you place a portable router on the drone and configure the port forwarding, you can control it over internet. Here TCP IP protocol is used, so latency gonna be reasonable. Actually, it's the version 4 of the unlimited drone range series that I'm doing for a long time. Since I made my Node M2 flight controller, my goal was to develop an advanced flight controller. And it's done. Or rather, I would say it's the beginning of what comes next. I want more advanced one. Indeed, I used an EKF, but the sensor was of the lowest grade. Also, the PID controller can be upgraded to state space based controllers like MPC and LQR. I ordered these sensors for the next IMU. You can suggest better option in the comment section. Now, if you want to make this, there are two packages available. One with only the runnable files, where you just download the files, do the assembly, upload the codes and you are ready to fly another one if you want all the codes and want to further develop it but this time it's not free you know youtube revenue isn't enough to fund this channel so choose the one that suits you the best and see you in the next video